Hey guys, Bobby Bollinger here, and I'm bringing you some NFL hot takes this Monday. I just... If you watched Fox football in my area, you understand. My area, I live in Indiana. So I thought, you know, it's our home opener. I'm sure the Colts game will be on. Nope. I got to watch Bears versus Buccaneers. Yep. Started my day off with a blowout from a team I didn't even want to watch. That I shouldn't have been watching. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Colts game just... Went into overtime, nothing, nothing special. <laughs> then I start to watch the uh, Broncos-Cowboys game, and it's delayed, so they switch us over to Rams-Redskins, which is actually a really interesting game last week. Then uh, Broncos-Cowboys comes back on, and as I was... And at that point, I was interested in Rams Redskins. But we switched back over. And I got to watch another blowout. And I got to watch Akib Talib make a pick six. For those of you wondering, Akib Talib is basically just a street thug. That's all I think of him. I might elaborate on that. Later, we'll see how angry I am. So, I watched four games, kind of. But I only watched one game completely. I actually skipped the Sunday night game, because at that point, my brain was just fried. I was pissed off for all of the reasons. I had just sat staring at a television through two blowouts. And I can handle a defensive game. I like the grinding stuff. I love Super Bowl 50. Not blowouts. Those drain me. And two in a row? Uh, yeah, I couldn't handle it. And as it turns out, Packers-Falcons was a blowout too. <laughs> So thank God I didn't watch that game. This, this was the worst week of football this area has ever experienced, bar none. Anyway, first game I watched. I don't get ESPN or NFL Network, and I don't really want to. So, I started off with... Bears Buccaneers. Buccaneers doing better than I expected. Except that wasn't really how it went. What I saw wasn't as much the Buccaneers doing well as the Bears just sucking. The O line was out of whack. The quarterback sucked. Like, if Mitch Trubisky hasn't replaced him at this point, I don't think he'll ever be ready. <laughs> At all. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, my brain... My brain's still a little fried from all that. Uh, that's not to say the Buccaneers were bad. They did stuff the Bears. On run and in pass. And while that doesn't mean as much because it was more the Bears screwing up, it still means something. Also, the offense truly was as good as it looked. I thought it was a pretty good-looking offense, and I could see it working out just fine now. The running game, I don't think it's going to be that consistent. The Bears as a whole were out of whack, and I wouldn't expect them to be that bad all season. I mean, they're not playoffs. Hell no, but... So, I'm not sure the Buccaneers will be running the ball that much, especially because I don't think they're going to have that big of a lead all the time, so they won't even try to run that much. 
Okay. Next game. Dallas against Denver. I'm more connected to players in the NFL than I am to teams, so while Peyton Manning was with the Broncos, they were my second favorite team. You know, just below the Colts, who are the only ones exempt from that player over team thing. So once he left, the Colt, the Pate, the Broncos were subject to how much I like their players once more. I like Simeon. That's it. I mean, I'm starting to develop some liking for C.J. Anderson as well, because I think he is a really good running back, and without him, they suck. But one bad apple does spoil the punts for me. And I just hate Aqib Tlaib. Ripping off a golden necklace. He said, oh, but that's illegal. Then reported to the ref, you piece of crap. I mean, this is a guy, and that's not the only case. But, ah, uh, if I was in charge of the Broncos... I'd kick him off the team just so our attitude doesn't go to crap. I wouldn't tolerate street thugs. And that doesn't mean black. It means the street thug attitude. I would not keep him on at all. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. So watching him succeed sucked. Now the Denver Broncos, they played pretty well. So well that that is not going to be how they play ever again. See, what I saw was a team that has prepared for this one game all offseason. And I hate that. It is so stupid. Just prepare for every game equally. And if you're a good team, you'll win. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind. They controlled Dallas. They had Dallas in the palm of their hand. They knew everything they were going to do. There is no way they prepared for any game other than this. Now, that's not to say, again, the Broncos are bad. They had to execute that plan. And the defense is really good. I think run defense, even though it did know exactly how to stop Elliott... I think it really is better than last year, and definitely good enough to return this defense to glory. Meanwhile, the running game's back, and that means Simeon's back to being a good quarterback. Without a running game, no, no team's good. No team can be good without a running game. That's just a fact of life. No game... The game tends to be won, actually, on... Who has the most rushing yards? That's generally how things go. And that was especially true this week with Denver and Dallas. Now, what made the Cowboys lose other than the Broncos being vastly overprepared? Some blame does go to the offense, yeah. They did not play as well as they should have. But I'm not going to blame Ezekiel Elliott because his O-line... Like, he... I don't think he ever got past the line of scrimmage without getting hit. Like, he was always hit behind the line. And for a Cowboys line, which is supposedly the best in the league... That's not good. He can't, no one can operate like that. Like, it doesn't matter who the running back was that game. They were not going to get more than 10 yards. As for Prescott, you know, when one of the biggest parts of your offense is just taken away, you're not going to play well. When you're forced, eventually, to play quick, to play for that deep ball... And Denver knows that, 
they're going to take advantage of it and they're going to destroy you. Now, why were in that were they in that huge losing position to start with? Defense. Last week after they beat the Giants, people were actually coming out saying all over Dallas Cowboys defense looks really good. And I just thought you idiots. Like I didn't think it would be terrible. But I did not think Dallas Cowboys defense was going to be good. Like, congratulations. You limited a team with no pass protection and no running game. Good job. Nah. I didn't trust Dallas defense for a second. And in this game, it showed big time. They could not stop C.J. Anderson to save their life. They could not get themselves off the field. Forget about the offense giving the defense a break. The defense didn't give the offense any time to be on the field. And Denver, they played it masterfully. They were the ones controlling the clock. And that is Dallas's biggest weakness. It relies on controlling the clock. When it does that, everything runs smoothly. And their prevent defense works pretty well because teams have to score quickly but they can't but and that works against pretty much every team every offensive team is going to get grinded down by Ezekiel Elliott that's a fact the way the guy's built he will do good against offensive teams he'll do good against average teams the one team that doesn't work against is defensive teams and sometimes that's not a problem like with the Giants who had nothing on offense who had no running game but when a team like the Cowboys lets a defensive team start running on them all of a sudden the defensive team is the one controlling the clock and then it's over so the Broncos they were able to run the ball, they were going to win. No way around that. Dak Prescott does deserve some credit for their loss, yes. Not as much as Jason Garrett gives him. But he does deserve some credit. Like that pass to Aqib Tlaib, I couldn't understand what he was seeing. Like, I have to assume... That he was just a little inaccurate in what was supposed to be a back shoulder throw. And it ended up being more of a regular throw that was very easily intercepted. Uh, it was ugly. But at the end of the day, even though the defense did poorly... It's. I would not pin the loss on them. I would pin it on the defense. And since the defense has not been good for years, I'm going to have to pin the fact that they have a bad defense on either the management or the coaches. And everything Jason Garrett's shown me is... He probably needs to be replaced. He won't be because he's succeeding. But that guy uh, is not someone I would trust. Like, I get gut feelings on things. And they're generally right. Like, picking games, no. That's not exactly the best way to go about things. But on really specific things... It's apparently the most accurate thing in the world. Like, I looked at the Texans giving Brock Osweiler a big can contract and thought, he's not worth that much money. Lo and behold, he's back at Denver. And I'm not even sure he's on anything but the practice squad. And among other things, too, like, I thought... You know, I don't think David Johnson's that good of a choice at running back. And he's definitely not a fantasy running back this year. I thought, you know, David Johnson, 
Something tells me something's gonna go wrong. Hey, look, he's injured. Yeah. So, I trust my gut on specifics, and it's telling me Jason Garrett's gotta go. It won't happen, but it's what it's telling me. Either him or the defensive coach. But I don't think the defensive scheme is the problem. They need people on the defensive line. <sighs> That's all the games I watched. Now, I also said I watched the Redskins and Rams. Oh well. What I really want to talk about is Browns versus Ravens. I know that extra game being the Browns is going to get old. And I will stop talking about them, but... I just want to talk about this one specifically. Last week, it was out of interest in the Browns. This week, it's from being freaking angry at them. Like, Deshaun Kaiser threw three interceptions that game. And it's not necessarily because he's a bad quarterback against a really good defense. No, no, he threw one interception. Then he left the game with a migraine. You know, migraines, the stuff that messes with your head. The stuff that led to a person playing in the Super Bowl to start losing their vision. Now, fortunately, the Super Bowl player from the Broncos, uh, he was just a running back, so he just has to see whole run through. Quarterbacks can't do that. That, a migraine, messes with your mind so much, like, even just a headache is hell on your mind. You cannot think straight with a headache. And Kaiser has a migraine. He's against one of the best defenses in the NFL. They put him back in. And he ends up throwing three interceptions that day. That just made no sense to me. Like, I don't care if he says he's better. It's a migraine against one of the best defenses. He is not better. And what really makes that a problem is I watch Notre Dame football a little bit, somewhat, and I noticed Deshaun Kaiser was actually really good, especially at the start of the season. But, but, his performance went real downhill, real fast, once he started losing confidence. Like, once they lost one game and were out of the playoffs because they're not in the ESEC, his confidence just died, and his performance died with it. So, like, I wouldn't expect average an average person to know that unless they follow Notre Dame football, but I expect the people recruiting him to know that. And why you would even risk him losing his confidence. Like, that actually can kill his career. Now, he's got a chance to rebound next week. Unfortunately. <laughs> or maybe fortunately. I don't know. But, uh... My, my brain's actually hurting now from use. I got back from school. Yesterday was terrible on it, so I'm gonna be done here. <laughs> Yay.